All right, today we're reading Matthew chapter 16, and right off the bat we see that uh, one day the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, came to test Jesus. They're sort of the bad guys of the New Testament, demanding that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. Remember, we're sort of investigating this theme as we read the New Testament of, you know, who is Jesus um, and who are we in comparison to that. And, and we're going to see this really come alive in this chapter. And so Jesus replies to them and he said, only an evil adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. But the only sign that I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. And then he left them and he went away. Now, the sign of Jonah, remember the story of Jonah in the Old Testament, is Jonah was swallowed up uh, by the big fish, and he was in there for three days. And Jesus is, in essence, talking about that same thing happening to him when he is in the grave, right? So his death and resurrection, and then being in the grave for three days, that is the sign of Jonah. They, of course, didn't understand it. Um, It was totally opposite from the kinds of signs that they were expecting because the Pharisees and Sadducees were looking for a different kind of Messiah. And we just have to remember, and this is still true today, that we have to take God on God's terms, not on our own terms. And so that was a sign he was going to give them. And, And even after he died and rose again, so many of them would still reject him, right? So they weren't really looking for that sign. Uh, anyway, he talks here about the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees, and by yeast, he's talking about the the deceptive, uh, erroneous teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees and how it can spread through the community. But I want to scroll down here to verse 13, because after Jesus talks to the Pharisees and Sadducees about the question of his identity, he turns to his disciples and asks them the same question. Remember, These are just regular dudes, just fishermen. And he said, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Talking about himself. And he said, who do you say that I am? Verse 15. And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Now, again, he didn't fully understand what he was saying. Peter didn't when he said that. And you'll understand that more as you continue to read the story and even Peter's doubts further down the road in the story. But, you know, Jesus says that's right, and you didn't just come up with this on your own. God himself revealed this to you. But then this is interesting in verse 21. It says, from then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem, that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders and the priests, and that he would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. So in essence, this passage here is telling us that Jesus, at this point, this is sort of like a pivot point where Jesus started talking very frankly with his disciples about what previously he maybe talked about in parables or sort of shrouding it in mysterious language like the sign of Jonah from earlier in the chapter. So from now on, he's going to be really clear with them. He's going to die. And so what happens next is interesting. Peter says, hey, this isn't good. You know, we don't want you to die. And Jesus turns to Peter and he rebukes him. He says, get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. And I love that passage because it's so important for us to remember if you're going to be a pursuer of God and as you read through the New Testament and as you develop this spiritual discipline of reading the Bible and prayer, It really is. A Christian life is really all about trusting in Jesus. It's learning to see things God's way, not from our point of view. Peter thought that he was doing the valiant thing by telling Jesus, no, we don't want you to die. But Jesus knew, listen, this is all part of the plan. Sometimes we get the plan wrong and we have to be reprimanded by Jesus and put in our place. And that's what's happening here to Peter in Matthew 16. So you're ready to read this chapter, and we'll see you tomorrow for chapter 17.